All right, it's Friday. About time. Happy Friday, everybody. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, it is Jeff Blair and Kevin Barker. Sportsnet 590 fan of Sportsnet. Oh, hi, Mom, by the way. I haven't said hi to my mom for... She's mad at you? No, no, no. My Your mom's mom never, great. My mom never gets mad. What happened to you? My mom never gets mad. I know. She's, I'm the perfect son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You leave her alone? <laughs> You're such a knob. <laughs> the uh, Jays start a three-game series against the San Diego Padres tonight. What can go wrong? They're facing a knuckleball guy. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they are, buddy. Oh, sweet oh, Jesus. Oh, they are. Oh, no. And you know, you know oh. the worst, you know the worst thing about this oh. guy is is he only throws his knuckle. He's got five pitches. He only throws his knuckleball about 35% of the time. Oh. And all the other ones, he throws about the same amount of time. So it's like a plethora of just different speeds and ball moving all over the place. God, and, just gonna, you're oh, gonna need man. A, they're gonna be. Yeah, they're going to be wearing hazmat suits oh, going man. up to the plate. All that slopping yeah. thrown at them, and yeah, oh, yeah. that's got. I mean, that's got 15 day hitting slump <laughs> mixed written all over it, right? You ever face a knuckleballer? Absolutely. How many times? It's terrible. There, more guys. There, there used to be more knuckleballers than there are there are, there are now. I mean, they were very rare, but yeah, again, it's uh, like you got one chance. It's scoot close to the plate, scoot closer to him, choke up, try and pull it. Like it's. <laughs> It's not like it's rocket science. Like, it's going to move a little bit. It's going to move late. It's going to be really slow. Try and see it up. We'll and try it and pull it. High, there fly you go. Like, don't overthink it. Have a little fun with it. But the problem with this guy is he throws a lot of other pitches. He just sort of sprinkles in the knuckleball. It's like he pitches with the knuckleball and four other pitches. What can go so, wrong? So, yeah. How do you get ready for a knuckleball you or don't. a BP? You don't. I, I always told the story about... Every team used to have a guy who could who could throw a knuckleball during BP. Like when I covered the Expos, Tim Wallach would 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 throw a knuckleball during BP. I think the Jays had somebody who would do it. It's yeah, it's dumb. Just for that's not uh, yeah, like that. That's why would yeah. I want to be in a uh, in a slump in batting practice? Like that that's the that's to get me happy and and feeling good and frisky and full of rotations good look how far the ball's really, going and then i'm swinging and missing on knuckleballs and batting practice what could go wrong uh, you know this line i took of, pride in being the best five o'clock hitter in baseball Jeff. Yeah, well, I, so, okay. so you've you know told many me hits often. i got in five, at five o'clock a ton <laughs> a ton yeah yeah you're the guy the hitting coach would be behind the Behind the cage, and everybody be ooing and aahing. The hitting coach would look over and tap his no, wrist. No, no, no. I, mean, Gib- I never will forget when I played for the Blue Jays and Gibby. Gibby used to always stand behind the cage and act like he was doing something. You know, he'd lean up and he'd yeah. half, half asleep. And I'm hitting balls in the fourth deck at the Rogers Center. And I'm like, hey, you want to change the lineup? And he ain't even paying attention. It's like, it means nothing. What do you think about that, Gibby? <laughs> it means the- it really does. Hey, uh, why don't you just not worry about it? Yeah. That's right. That's that's. How dare I you miss laugh that. at me? I miss that. Do you really? I kind of miss that. Miss what the you get him on? Gibbyism. Would he come on? He's, he's a. Hey, my boys, huh? <laughs> he's got uh, he's got enough to worry about right now with the Mets, Mets bench coach. <laughs> uh, anyhow, first of uh, three games uh, against the Padres tonight. First pitch. Oh hell! They didn't put it down in the sheet. It's late. First, first pitch is uh, five in the morning, <laughs> Toronto time. No, I think it's let me let me look here. Ten oh seven, ten oh seven, or ten thirty. This is just such a stupid thing. It's just such a nine forty. There Eastern you go tonight. Be more dumb traffic. That's just dumb. Anyhow, nine forty tonight on uh, Sportsnet. It'll be Ariel Rodriguez against Matt Waldron. Uh, John Schneider, the manager of the soon-to-face a knuckleballer Blue Jays, will join us at 3 o'clock. Mark Grant, Padres TV analyst, former MLB pitcher, will join us via Zoom. And uh, we'll talk to him about the Padres, who... I mean, I... The start of the year, when we had to do our picks, I said I thought an awful lot of people were sleeping on the Padres this year. I I like the Padres. Yeah, I picked them to make the playoffs. I like the Padres. I, yeah, yeah. I did, too. I, I think they're... They got some really good hitters. They got some yeah. uh, aircraft carriers in the middle of their order. Yeah. And they got Fernando Tatis Jr., who is, I mean, he does it all. Like, it's, you know, he sort of le- left a bad taste in your mouth by getting suspended mm-hmm. and those kind of things. But the, you can't argue when you watch him play how he does things and, and how no. easy it looks on the field. It's And he's really 
right now doing some things offensively. So when your offense is not scoring runs and you're running into a team that leads baseball in scoring runs, that's a lot of pressure on a pitching staff to go in there and keep that team from scoring. It's not going to be the easiest thing. Yeah. Shai Davidi will uh, join us at 2.30 as well. We'll get him to stop eating fish tacos for a minute and join us. It's all I think of as San Diego fish tacos. Best fish tacos on the planet. Without question. Mm. Without question. Couldn't tell you. Meat and potatoes. Me. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's, I don't know why, but it's like so much of my baseball memories revolve around food. That might tell you something, eh? So, um, we'll go to the back leg line as well. 416-413-3959. We'll do that later in the show. We got lots of comments and questions to go through. Interesting comments. Uh, very interesting. That third one down on this sheet here is pretty interesting. Why don't you read it? I, I, I choose not to. Okay. I like my job. Yeah. Um, that's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are you expecting from uh, Mr. Yariel Rodriguez? Yeah, see, I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with him. I, I really don't. I think offensively, I mean, again, we, we've talked about this till we're running out of ways to talk about it. And you just look at the two different teams, Jeff. And, you know, you sit down because John's coming on and you're trying to figure out ways and things to ask him. And, you know, most of, most of the things are good with the pitching staff and they're starting to play defense a little bit better. And, you know, those throwing issues they had the first couple of games of the season, I don't have those anymore. You know, they, they tend to have baseball IQ on the bases a little better. So all those things are positive. And you flip it over on that other side of the ball. And I just don't know how you'd be positive about that. I mean, basically, they really do nothing well. I, I mean, again, the last Good seven, Lord, the last seven games, their first and on base percentage at three sixty five. Other than that, well, that's a, that's something. Yeah, but it's that's something it's, it's, you can hang your hat on that. It, it's the bottom of the order, and it's one guy at the top of the order, and then there's everybody else, and everybody else is supposed to be driving in. The guys that are getting on base and they're just not doing it. All so right. you know that that's it. I, look, I try to be as positive as I can most of the time. Most of the time. But it, you know, since about what was it, June of last year, this is becoming a habit, not a, you know, just a an occasional occurrence. So and of course, when I brought up on the day Danny Jansen returned, when I said to you, or when I asked you, now that Danny Jansen's back and the lineup is complete. Would you foresee any changes made to the to the lineup? Why would you do that? Who's you going to move today? You come in, you say, you know what they should do? They should move Justin Turner to the number two spot. Yeah, why That's not? What you said, oh, you know well, why? You, you ripped yeah, you me know for why? suggesting well, that there would be a change. What what changed in what well, you, changed in three games? You, they won two of those you, three you, games, you, and now you change your mind. Yeah, Vladdy Vladdy's hitting one forty three with runners to scoring position. You gave they won Justin two Turner's or three not. Games. He's hitting over three hundred. It's they won two like, or three games again, against when, the Yankees. When you look and at the other stats, the third game they could have swept. Like I'm trying to answer the question, you won't let me. I mean, what? I mean, wow. you, you, you look, they're 22nd in total bases in baseball. They are 22nd in at bats between homers at 38. Oh, that's so that's lineup. every 38 at bats, they hit a homer. Why that's important and why I wanted to bring that up, you know who's first in baseball in doing that? The Orioles. They hit a homer every 21 at bats. That, that's the difference. And then they're 28th in average with runners in scoring position at 204. They're last in homers with runners in scoring position, with a whopping one. And who's first? The Orioles with eight. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. This is not a home run hitting team. Yeah, but uh, it's again, not a home run hitting uh, team. Well, you want to make the play, you want to make the playoffs with a with a mi minus run differential. I mean, it's minus 17 now. Like this is the thing, right? Is how does it get better? Like the at bats, the way they got the the lineup constructed with where they put Vladdy in the two hole. Like the two hole because of what the bottom of the order's doing and the leadoff hitter's doing, getting on base at the end. Vladdy's coming up and he's got the most at bats with runners in scoring position hitting a whopping buck 143 like that's it's little things like this i know again you say it's early in the season but you know when you're fourth or fifth in your division and your division is supposed to be the the oh, toughest division in baseball panicking. you think they're doing it's this not in tampa? panic no it's not panic. Tampa? yeah i think tampa is sort of come to the realization that because of all the injuries you could see them taking a step back like realistically going into the season 
That's not Sometimes what you, you said. Sometimes you said the underground, yeah, does, 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 do you think the underground city cares what I say? No, but that's it's about not, what you, they're saying you, and what they're thinking. You said you thought, that's it. Yo, don't, sleep, you don't sleep in the rays. I told you this is the year the rays fall back to earth. Don't sleep in the rays. Don't sleep in the nah, rays. because it's, it's always the rays. The rays always figure it out. Oh, maybe. You're overreacting. I, 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 I hope so that I am. But this has been happening since June of they're last year. And it's they're the game same, above 500. And it's the same team. They're game above 500. How are they, how are they, how are they game above 500? Can they continue to do that all season? Like you would think that would take a step back, no? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it won't. Eh, I mean, uh, to, I mean to, to think they're going to have a chance to make the playoffs, it better not. Like, again, like this is sort of you got to certain parts of the season be a little realistic and think how does it get a little bit better. And some guys, like they were saying. right, too right early so, for, It's too with, early to be realistic. With, with, it is? Oh, yeah. It's way too early to be realistic. Wow. I mean, again. They added think, one guy. They added one guy. That's the only the difference. Are going to win the West. That's, that's the only difference in the. the Central? I mean, they got a better chance in the Central than they do in the American League East. That's the point. That's the difference. And the American League is could be a little deeper because of the other teams that's gotten off oh, to a quicker true. start. That is true. So you're going to have to hit a little bit better. That's true. The that's playoff. All. The playoff. Uh, the wild yeah. card picture could be messy. You could year. almost. You could, could almost say that the Jays are fighting for that third wild card spot with a with a, some yeah, other teams so. that you may not have been pointing the finger at. At the beginning of the season, that's all I'm saying. Because of the way some teams look, I, I'm just saying. You well again. This is what happens when we have John on, and you want to ask him certain questions on what he thinks about his team, and then you do some digging into the numbers. Padres have scored the most runs in baseball. Didn't I just say that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, they're averaging a little five point one runs a game. Yeah. The Jays are averaging three point eight. That's that's yeah. I, again, they played and they played two more games. Than the Jays did. So uh, it's. Yeah, their offensive numbers, they're solidly top five or top six in the majors in just about every, just about every. Yeah, game. and I say if you're, if you're not, if you're not going to hit, if you're not going to hit home runs in this team, you better hit a really high average with runners in scoring position. And the Jays are 28th in baseball at hitting 204. So a lot of things got to get better here, real uh, soon. Should we go to the back leg line? Absolutely. Let's go to the back leg line, shall we? Four one six four one three three nine five nine is the back leg line. Um, and uh, Scott from Thamesford, Ontario. Hey, Scott. Just have a question about Vlad. I see Edwin Encarnacion is in let it be. in town now, or was in town talking to Vladdy. Just want to thing. know how many mentors the Jays organization has to bring in to talk to Vlad. Too many. And it's got to be pretty embarrassing the Blue Jays that are all high on analytics having to bring in outside people to talk to one of their players every mm-hmm. year. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Bye. That's fair. Yeah, well, I mean, That's first of all, question. Edwin and, and Victor Martinez are paid by the team. They are part of the – they are advisors or they're – Yeah, and Edwin and Vladdy are neighbors in the DR, too. you got to remember yeah. that. They're buddies. Like they're, they are been, neighbors. Been, like, absolutely. Yes. They, they, been, I, I've, I've seen it. I've yeah. been there. So – it's look that relationship's been you know a, there a long time edwin's seen him as a you know i mean basically growing up they're mm-hmm. running around together and families and all those things look i i think sometimes you're when you're struggling doing things that you are expected to do you're searching for reasons and if you can bring somebody in who will give you a certain word or a certain sentence or you know maybe tell you how to hit a fastball consistently that's the thing. They can bring in 5,300 people in here until he actually figures out how to hit a fastball better. I don't think it matters. And I'm, I'll, I will continue to be in that camp. I can't take him serious as a really, really good hitter, borderline great hitter, if he's hitting 270 on the fastball. I've done these numbers. I've, I've, I've told you these numbers a bazillion times. Since the, the really good season that he had where he hit somewhere in that 360 range. In minor league parks. That's well, he hum- did. We've got okay. to say that. <laughs> Since then, it's been in the 270s, yeah. 280s, 290s. That's just not good enough for an elite offensive player. It's just not. And whether that's mental or mechanical or khakis or overwhelming him of information, this I, is what I, this is what I said when I came in here and I was digging into these numbers. I was saying if you got somebody this part of the season with the way your offense is looking that can give you better at bats with runners and scoring position, I ain't saying it's long term. We're past the feeling thing. 
or past worried about what people think about you as a manager or whatever that is. Well, it's we, about it's about winning baseball we games. That last and, year. and if Turner gives you a better chance in the two hole, Turner can clean up different yeah, positions I, in the lineup because of what guys are doing in front of him. That's all I'm saying. And right now, Vladdy just looks really in between. And we we have the same conversation yeah. all the time. Well, we'll and talk until to, we'll he talk starts to hitting John. fastballs. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you John. You can about ask that. him about Vladdy. But, but oh, thanks. Well, you can because I've had conversations with the, John. I, about I will Vladdy's say mechanics. this, though. You know, the like to the caller specific question Edwin is paid by the team. He is a coach. He spent a lot of time last year with Arelvis Martinez, their top position prospect. So when you see Eddie in the dugout or Victor Martinez in the dugout, keep in mind that they are team employees. Now, last year, when he brought Wilton Guerrero in and reached out to David Ortiz for help. Like I said, I have no problem with guys. I mean, you got to do what you got to do to survive. I, I have David, no problem with that. David's neighbors too. And David's like, you know, you but, know. but my, my point is halfway through the season, if you are looking outside the organization for someone to help you, um, if I'm that organization, I've got to do some, Something. Yeah, and again, I think I think sometimes we got to be realistic too. Raise your hand and, and sometimes say that maybe you know with elite offensive players, at least what that's what we think they are. Most of the time, you don't have to bring in fifteen or twenty different people giving you fifteen or twenty, 20 right. different answers because most elite offensive players fix it quicker than Barkers of the world. Bruce from the French. It's a great question, though. It by was, the way. It was, it was a, very a great good question, question, Scott. Bruce from the French River in Ontario. French River, awesome. If you ever get a chance, sounds oh, awesome. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. Go canoeing in the French River, Bruce. Mm -hmm. I just, I know you guys like the odd cigar, but I just wonder if you oh. have any funny stories Watch. about chewing tobacco, kind of a baseball tradition in years gone by. Thanks. Bye. I mean, I yeah, got, I got one. You got okay. Go yeah, I, I got one. I, the the very first time I met Rod Carew. Rod Carew's a big. Tobacco yep. chewer, like a. He said the, it helped him see because it kept his eye. Whatever. It kept his eye stationary. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was wearing my white pants. Yeah. And I wasn't playing that day for whatever reason. Like I was the prospect. I was playing first. Yeah. You know, I was in between. I was all over the place offensively. Like, and I just wasn't playing that day. And I remember I was you, to the nines, but I was you know tucked yeah. in and my shoes look, are sweet. You look sharp. I, I know where this by, is going. I walk, I walk by with my you know as clean as you can get white pants, and Rod Carew just went. <laughs> And it was all down like one leg of my pant for like a foot. I never will forget that. I had no idea what to do. What do you say to a Hall of Famer if they do that? I appreciate that. That's what. That's, ex that's exactly what I, I had, said to him. I appreciate that. I, I had just turned around really, and walked off. I had a really that's the only story I got. I had a really nice pair of like suede hush puppies dress shoes Yeah, back in the day. And I was in it. But you should never, ever, ever wear in a dugout. Yeah, but anyhow. that's amateur. So I'm wearing it in the dugout, yeah. and uh, yeah. Lenny Dykstra, God bless him, oh, in the man. visitor's dugout, like that, all over the shoes. And I walk by. I turn and look at him. He goes, dude, sorry. That's all I, that's Does the only thing. He didn't buy you a new pair of shoes or anything? No, he just said, dude, sorry. I can remember taking like a whole handful of dirt and trying to rub it on my pants to get it off or just I, sort of hide it. I do remember. It didn't work. I do remember. He did it on purpose. Tim Scott. Tim Scott, who uh, was a pitcher with the X and with the Padres as well, he had this very um, programmed way of wrapping Wrigley's double mint yeah. and chewing tobacco yeah. and bubble gum together mm -hmm. into a ball. I've seen guys do that. Yeah, and he was he did it one time. I, I just remember. You did it? I, he he did one for me, and I stuck it. It lasted like a minute. Yeah, and you, that was you it. get dizzy. I got I got dizzy. Yeah, I could see that. But I had the gap in my teeth, so I could. <laughs> oh, so I got the stream going. Right. But that was it. Oh, okay, you look cool anyway doing it. Yeah, but yeah. It, you know, back in the day, like God, all the baseball writers used to you used to yeah, see guys. Yeah, like greenies in in the clubhouse. Yeah, everybody used, everybody was doing. It. Used to see guys. I don't know about the writers. <laughs> you see guys in spring training all the time, and then yeah. and then they came out with these uh, these pouches. little pouches, which it are is. just. Well, that's, it's cleaner. It, it's cleaner. And it's yeah, supposed to be, I mean, it's like, supposed to be safer. Yeah, that's like legalized pot. Once they legalize it or clean it up, what the hell's the point in doing it? Ernie from Cambridge, Ontario. Ernie. Speaking of cleaning it up. 
Just want to ask, in your opinion, is there any general managers available that might be able to change the direction that this team is heading? This, uh, th these guys, these these guys aren't easy to watch when they're uh, when they're winning, let alone losing. I'm just just wondering, like when you know when do do they make a change? Are they going to make a change? Should they make a change? Anyway, love the show. Thanks. Yeah, Ernie, I'll tell you, I have. Generally, I think I have a pretty good idea when a GM is going to get banged by an organization. You can feel in the it. Past, I've been pretty good. Coming. I got no clue. This organization, I just don't. Um, I, I, I just don't. We were thinking I, I don't it should have happened after the conversation last year that you know, I, you bust I mean, throw your manager and uh, and yeah, but you know what? But I, it didn't. No, I, I just, uh, I don't. This organization's different. It, it is. It's, 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 it's run in a different manner, and it's not just this organization. I mean, I made the point about. You've got so many people making decisions right now that I think it's very easy to defend a job a guy has done. Like, what did Mark Shapiro say about Ross They made Atkins? the playoffs the they last made couple the playoffs. years. And now people yeah. are going to roll their eyes, but yeah. you know what? They made the playoffs. That's what he said. And we spent 15 years saying, Jesus, if only this team could make the playoffs. So, um, I don't know. I thought last year was going to be a big year for the team. Uh, I thought with the decisions that were made, some of the trades that were made, I thought it would be, this would be where the rubber meets the road. I, I, I just don't know. I, I honestly just don't know. Part of me thought, okay, maybe part of the issue is Mark Shapiro was so focused on this ballpark. Mm -hmm. It's not that he can't walk and chew gum at the same time, but maybe that was his area of focus. And I, I, I just don't know. And, and, I'll, and I'll tell you this. I am going to throw this out there. Mm. I am going to throw this out there. The number of people on social media who say they should get rid of Ross and put James Click in there because it'll make it different. I got news for you. You're not going to have fewer khakis running around the organization if James Click is you your general more. manager. Trust me. Yep. So, um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I am. As far as there's someone available, I mean, who knows? Uh, look around. There a, a lot of the general managers that have been hired recently. You know who they were? I I, I still I still find it hard to believe that Ross is not sitting somewhere wherever he's sitting in the offseason and going offensively. We're just not good enough. Why am I not going out and fixing it unless they're not allowing him to spend again? I'm not making excuses for him. I was the one that said, "How do you? How does he keep yeah. his job after what he said about the manager at the end of the season?" I it just it's amazing to me that the numbers that you are seeing now are the same numbers that they were having. Three months at the end of the season last year, nothing's changed. So, yep. I, I'm with you. I have no idea. Let's go all the way to Chilliwack, BC. Fine band, by the way, Chilliwack. Is it back in the day? Never yep. heard of Chilliwack, BC. Of course you have. Mm -mm. You guys have been talking about pitchers throw 98 and how that attracts the fans and everything. But as a person that loves to watch pitching, I I am totally amazed that how Chris Bassett goes about his starts. Mm -hmm. Like you can really see on the mound how much he's thinking and comparing each pitch to what the hitter can do and so on and so forth. It's just very, like they say on the on the telecast, very cerebral. So it's awesome to watch Chris Bassett pitch. I think more pitchers need to be like that. That gives the, the viewer something to look at and like lots of hard throwers all they do is put their head down and throw the ball right so to watch Bassett uh, work his way through a start is is very interesting and awesome to watch so thanks boys yeah yeah I mean I, I'm with you I, I you know based on the conversations we've had with people the last mm -hmm. couple of days Kevin I wonder if maybe I, I don't know. Are we going to see more guys, especially late in their career, sacrifice Velo to become more like Chris Bassett? Now, you got to remember, Chris, when he was with Oakland, was a hard thrower yeah. until he had Tommy John and said, I need to fix this if I yep. want to stick around and be a big leaguer yeah, for another 10 out. years. He didn't intentionally set no. out to be you, this You want to you know guy. why? Because it's a quicker way to make a bunch of money. Yeah. If I throw hard... It's easier for me to get you out. I don't have to work as hard to do it. Now he's has to work tremendously hard. Why why if I'm a pitcher and I'm watching Chris and I don't have to do that, why would I do that? I think back to uh when, so money in it, when when the Jays signed Chris Bassett, I think it was John Harper, one of the New York writers, but we talked about uh, about Chris Bassett and his point was 
the thing with Chris Bassett is you almost you get the sense he's always in survival mode. That's and fair. He, but he wasn't, and he wasn't saying that negatively. But no. he was saying you always get the sense that he's one pitch away from calamity or one pitch away from getting out of it. And I think. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's hard work being Chris Bassett. Out, out of the five starters the Jays have, the only one I'd buy a ticket to watch is Chris. Uh, I said buy a ticket. Buy a I'm ticket. not saying watch. Yeah. I'm saying buy a ticket and go to the actual field, sit in the stands, and watch Chris throw. I kind of like. I, I can watch Kevin Gossman throw ninety five with a split finger. I can kinda watch. Like, I kind of like watching Barrios. I, uh, I kind of like watching Barrios. Uh, do we have time for one more caller we'll before make we break? We'll make time. Especially for Billy and Markham. Oh. I know that Cabrera is, is not one of our uh, better relievers, but when a guy's going good, let him go. He should have came out for the third inning. This is like <laughs> betting a parlay in, in gambling. I always tell people, just bet one game. You bet a parlay, yeah. You a 4-5 or five team parlay, you can catch four of them. The one game you lose, you lose, you lose a ticket. And it's the same thing. Here with this uh, one inning guys every in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. If a guy's going good for <laughs> sake, let the guy go. Well, and Cabrera should have came out and pitched. It's uh, not going to happen. The two clowns that we had come out yesterday and, and blow another ball game. It's going to be I meaningful uh, come September rolling Billy. around. Well, and, and we're fighting for that Billy. last uh, wild card spot. I, I, agree, I agree with Billy about every game matters because of the way they don't hit. But the, it's but it, it's about the up downs. It's about a pitcher throwing that's not used to doing that, going over there and sitting down and doing that two times in an outing. It ain't going to happen. Like it's just, Unless you're used to doing it, the Cabreras, the Jimmy Garcias, the Chad Greens, the Jordan Ramona, they ain't happening. That's so not Billy happening. can yell and scream at the TV all he wants and says bring out Cabrera 15 times. It ain't going to happen. It, that's how they get hurt. And quite frankly, because of the way Tim Mays has been throwing, they need Cabrera. And it's early in the season. I don't like to agree with Jeff a lot, but when he says it's early in the season, you just finish they look telling at it me like it wasn't it's early. early in the season. I, offensively, it's not. This is a thing. Well, you can't split pitch, it up. You can't wise. say it's early pitching in the wise. season offensively and it's not early in the season pitching. You can't say that. I just did. But that's stupid. It is not stupid. Okay. Um. Huh? Not even a little bit stupid. Curtis from Tabor, Alberta. Curtis. Throughout baseball, you hear from very many people who are successful in the game. In order to win a World Series, you need great pitching and people who hit dingers. Yeah. Earlier in the week, Kevin, you said Dalton Varsho is not a hitter. Well, our team is in big trouble when our non-hitter probably leads the team in home runs. He does. And hits two home runs in one game. That is why the Blue Jays will continuously be a playoff team and never go anywhere in the playoffs. Who in the league do you think the Blue Jays could get to add actual home run power wow. to the lineup? It's too so we have a chance to win a World Series because we have the pitching and the hitting has mm -hmm. been failing us for several years now. Yeah. Pete Alonso for the Mets, Kyle Tucker for the Astros. That's my two guys. Two. I, they'll never get either one of them because you'd have to give up stuff, and I don't think the Mets will give up Pete Alonso because it's the Mets, and, you know, that guy's given up enough, I, mean, I think, this year to compete. So he will be he would be a hard get. I mean, the, the part, part of the problem with trying to look at trade partners right now is, um, you know, the Astros right now are not very good, but no. they're getting Verlander back. See, I think the uh, offensively the, they are good though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Astros are interesting because they've they've also got Alec Bregman. Alex Bregman is a free agent. Um, I look at the Mets. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with Pete Alonso. I'm stunned that he's had, that he hasn't signed yet. The Mets have got have got so much money that I would think that if they want to sign Pete Alonso, they'll sign him. You know, <sighs> there was a guy who just rolled through town. And I looked at him and I said, I would take him on my team in a heartbeat. And I might I might want to be a little aggressive in who I trade to get him. And that's Ryan McMahon. Thought about Ryan McMahon. I'm looking elsewhere around the game. You know, the, the, the dudes on the Cardinals. Yeah, I, 
I, I don't know. It, it's, yeah, yeah, I think you got a bunch of Cardinals on your team already. Yeah, uh, exactly. Again, I, I, think, exactly. I think people have to remember what the organization has been telling us you know, at whole uh, off season and spring training I'm looking at, of how they believe in the core. Yeah, I think you got to remember that. Yeah, and you know, at some point they're going to have to move off the core. They are. Well, I mean, they don't. They when, are. When? Well, I mean, if it's yeah, you know, we've already had this discussion. I would have been really aggressive getting Juan Soto in this year, and maybe they try. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, Luis Robert is hurt. I mean, there are there there are guys out there that. You could be realistic about, but it's really hard to, at this stage of the season, try to make fantasy trades with teams. But I listen, if you're asking me what would I add, I would add a middle-of-the-order left-handed bat that can play third base. Yeah, I don't me, care if he's left-handed. Basis. I, I mean, that's a perfect scenario. I, I only care if he hit, can he hit a homer with the dude standing at second. Like, I, that's the only thing I care about. Hey, can he give you that at bat when it matters the most? Can he hit velocity out of the yard? They don't do that. This team does does not do that. At what point? Can you I, get a guy to do that? I, I want to take a break. But at what point, Kevin, if you're the Jays, do you start thinking about Vladdy, who's a free agent at the end of next year? Do you start thinking, maybe I got I to gotta look at making a deal that helps me now, but also brings in somebody else's prospect? Like, I'm just throwing out a name. It's not going to happen because they're in the same division, like a Heston Kierstad from the Orioles. I look at making a deal that helps me now and brings in a prospect. And I'm just saying, you know, and, and we, by the way, Ricky Tiedemann went in the IL yesterday. So, you know, again, this minor league system doesn't have a great deal of depth in order, in order to make deals. But uh, listen, uh, Curtis, call back in two months because we're going to be having this discussion. I guarantee and you I'm that. And I'm with Curtis. The, the I, I ask you this, I think, after the game, yes, two days ago, can they make the playoffs with Dalton Varsho leading their team in homers? Yeah, but he's not going to be leading their team and in homers you, after the weekend. That's a silly question. Well, you're silly. You're confident. He can't Shai hit 25. Our, of course I'm confident. Shai Davidi's our MLB insider at Sportsnet. He's in San Diego. Lucky son of a <laughs> Shai Davidi joins us next. It's Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590, the fan at Sportsnet. Hey, it's Friday. We are back. It's Blair and Barker. This thing about Friday is... 940 first pitch. You staying up for it? No. This, I don't have to drive on the highway tomorrow. That's the only thing I care it, about. This is Friday. Let's make a deal. No more highway talk. It's hard. No Jeff. more gardener. It's talk. really, it's really hard, Jeff. Well, yeah. Everybody in Everyone the city. Everyone wants to a hug. Everybody in the city's dealing with it. Everybody in the city's trying to figure out why, when you shut down part of the major east-west expressway in the city, do you insist on shutting down every other freaking road running parallel to it for construction? That's all everybody's wondering. Uh, not me. That's all everybody's wondering. Like, nobody plans anything. Nobody you, plans anything. Do you feel better? <laughs> it's hard. It's People you know used awesome. to say that Toronto was New York run by the Swiss. Hmm. Used to. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. I'll anyway, never bring it up again. Don't, because I don't want to hear any more about it. Everybody out there, there's people right now, 2.30 uh -huh. on a Friday. There's people right now who've been waiting to get through that little patch between Jameson and whatever for 45 minutes. Yeah. Saying, shut up about the traffic. You don't want to hear about it. Okay. Don't let it beat you. If you want to hear about the traffic, go to 680 News. They'll talk about it. They don't come here to, to talk about traffic. They don't. Well, let's go to the luck, one of the luckiest people I know. <laughs> Shy to yeah. joins us from San Diego. Lucky too. Must be uh, bad weather in San Diego today. Hey, I Terrible, hear it got huh? down to 73. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's actually it's only like 16 Celsius. Huh? So wow, you know, yeah, no yeah, yeah, I feel very gypped. It's raining yeah, I, here. I was going to say, how are you going to how are you going to manage tonight? <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to. Are you going to have to wear? You're, you're not going on a run now. You're going to have to wear a little sweater tonight to the game. <laughs> I, I actually, it might be necessary because it's going to like dip to like, like uh, eight or ten. Oh, He's so my serious. Real, eight or ten. Oh, He's so my serious. Real is hardship, it, guys. It yeah. is. And, of course, it's cloudy as hell, right? Did you pack one? A sweater? Uh, it, uh, I actually did because oh. I did see that it's going to be cool at night. Oh, so, cool. Oh, man. gee. It's going to be awful. Uh, well, the, the, oh. the, cloud has, the clouds have burnt off. The, uh, the sky is now blue, guys. Yeah. We'll suck okay. it up. <laughs> um, yeah. Barker's convinced that they're going to get swept. By what? the Padres. 
by the way. What? Uh, it's going to be an interesting series. I don't, I don't know that I see a sweep by the way, but uh, baseball's weird, right? No, anything, anything can happen. Their pitching's too good to get swept. That's not anything close to what I said. I said yeah. there has to be some urgency with the lineup, and it's just how you're mixing in and out the people that are in certain spots in the order, and Jeff took that as they're getting swept and they're never going to win another baseball game. Well, Kevin, and- Kevin's, Kevin, <clears throat> Kevin criticized me a week or a week three days ago because when Danny Jansen came back, I said, now that the lot, now that you've got your entire roster for the most part, uh, do you think John Schneider would look at changing the lineup? And, oh no, why would you do that? It's too early. I mean, your top four guys are your core guys. You're not going to change it. Then, then today, Shai, he comes in and goes, if it was me, I'd put Turner in the number two spot. So, I mean, I can't win with this guy. Mm. So, I can't, I can't am I win here with to be him. a mediator? Is that, is that what's happening? Well, what would you do? <laughs> I, I'm, I like Danny Jansen. I'd like to give him maybe a couple more games, but I, I don't mind Danny Jansen uh, five uh, anywhere from five, five, six, seven. Uh, I, I'm, right now, you're you're going to hang with your top four, obviously. And the Alejandro Kirk has been in five at times, and Danny Jansen is certainly going to give you that that uh, that little bit of thump that you like in that spot too. But you know, I think to, to some degree, the Blue Jays are also figuring out how they work and how their combinations work. Right. And you Mm -hmm. saw, you saw it a little bit in that Yankee series where, you know, late in games, they were, they were making moves and uh, Kevin Biggio getting hit, uh, getting hit for midway through a game with Ernie Clement when the Yankees brought in a lefty. I'm going to blend the games right now because they all seem like they were sort of one, but I think it might've been on the Wednesday in that series finale, and and it raised this question of like, when are the times where you line change with uh, with that team, and is it based about opportunities, a bit of based on trying to maximize the platoon advantage and uh, the maximum number of plate appearances? I think we're still seeing how the Blue Jays are are going to go, uh, are going to play that out, and maybe to some extent they're still figuring out how to best leverage all their pieces together as well. That's for sure. I've got a uh, I've got a confession to make. I had not gone on Twitter in the past fifteen minutes or X or whatever the hell he's calling it. Elon's calling it today. Um, so I'll get back to the Blue Jays in a minute. But Shy tweeted out the top Blue Jays prospect Ricky Tiedemann underwent an MRI yesterday mm. after experiencing left elbow discomfort. Mm. Uh, he's on the seven day IL. The club is still awaiting word back from doctors that's no bueno shy no yeah i mean i don't want to sort of get too alarmist about it just yet it could just be uh the type of discomfort that pitchers do experience i know because of uh, all the heightened injuries around the game right now and how the the the, 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 basically the flood of them uh, everyone's mind goes to a bad place right away but you know, so uh, but I just want to reserve judgment. Like, mm-hmm. That's all I know at this point is what I shared uh, is that he d- did have some discomfort. You know, anytime someone like a like a like a Ricky Tiedemann has any sort of discomfort in the elbow, that they're going to get an MRI on that as a matter of course. So uh, I don't know that necessarily this is leading us to to the worst outcome. Uh, but yeah, it, it, he needs to pitch, and he's had hasn't been able to stay on the field uh, consistently over the past couple of seasons. And so anything that takes him off the mound is, is counterproductive. Yeah, I'm rooting for him. He's a good kid. Uh, Dalton Varsha has been really good. I know you have conversations with him when you're at the field. Have you heard anything? Why Why the big change? Like, it, it just looks like his pace is better. He's not thinking about it. You know, sometimes when guys are trying too hard, you can actually see them thinking about how they're trying to – put the barrel to the baseball here lately just looks like he's free and easy and look right down the middle when you get it don't miss is that what you're seeing is that what you're hearing yeah a little bit of the a little bit of that he talked a little bit about just working to change his his back pass to the ball uh a little as well because he felt earlier in the season that he, like he liked his approach and the way he was thinking through his at bats and the way he was hunting but he just wasn't getting the barrel to the ball quite the way that he wanted to. And so he had some conversations with some teammates, George Springer, probably, probably among them. And it was just, so what, what little tweaks can I make? And he's found something right now that is getting his 
barrel to the ball in a way where he's able to take advantage of the power because he's got a lot of power. And one of the things that the Blue Jays locked in on, he locked in on last year was his swing path was producing more pop-ups than, than it should be. And that took away from some of his power. And so he definitely was on plane during that, uh, during that latter parts of that homestand. He was a, a major contributor to, to the Blue Jays during that time. And if he can ride that out and be consistent with it, then he's got a chance to be the type of offensive player the Blue Jays envisioned when they acquired him. Shy, you know, offensively, uh, so, sometimes, uh, look, I, I try to be as positive as I can, but when you see <laughs> minus 17 run differential and, you know, like, what are they, 22nd and, and at bats between homers, like, they, they just have a real tough time of, of basically getting velocity in the air. And, you know, we had a caller come on and ask about should they have some urgency on going and making a trade for somebody that can hit home runs. And we don't really know the answer to that, right? We have no idea if they can spend money, if they have anybody they want to trade. Would they trade a core guy? Like, we have no idea about that. Have you heard anything like that? Could there be some urgency when it comes to, you know, going to a team that you may, maybe they weren't talking to earlier that may be gotten off to a slower start that they can make a trade for? I'm not saying right now but sooner than later to come in and actually help this team drive the baseball, make it a little easier for the pitching coach and the manager to always make the right move when it comes to the pitching. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be ideal. It's just that you guys know this time of year, it's basically impossible. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the early part of the season, everybody's still trying to see what they have and how all the pieces fit together. And I mean, we're still in, you know, sample size, randomness territory right the, mm -hmm. it's hard to try to read too much into anything at this point I, I think one of the challenges in looking at the blue jays is that even though it's a different year and there are some different players on the team everything is happening with 2023 still in your mind mm -hmm. and you're looking at it you're like is this going to be different than 2023 and so far it really hasn't from an offensive perspective and so i think maybe that's causing uh, the collective us to maybe rush to judgment a little bit faster than we should. There are some things about this offense, particularly in the, the really strong chase rate, the, the discipline, the willingness to take walks that should change a lot of the numbers around this lineup. And that's probably going to need a little bit of runway Mm -hmm. to, to sort out. And, and maybe it's not, maybe it's not an indicator that there's going to be more damage there and there's going to be a better batting average and there's going to be better production. Mm -hmm. But I, I, generally, if you're disciplined and you're chasing the right kind of pitches and you're taking walks, that's going to result in, in runs scored. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think again, last year we were kept saying, you know, this hard contact is going to normalize. Eventually mm -hmm. that's going to come. And it didn't. So it's possible that this year the discipline doesn't pay off as well. But, you know, we're, we're three weeks in. We're still a, a ridiculous sample. It's, it's hard to sort of rush into samples, uh, in, sorry, into judgment, and teams aren't going to be willing to trade just yet unless you overpay to a stupid degree. Yeah. Shai, uh, we saw how that Yankee series ended with, you know, Chad Green not being available because of, uh, because of soreness and, 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 and I'm just wondering, understanding you haven't talked to John Schneider yet, and we'll actually talk to him in a couple of minutes, but is there, did you get any sense at all that, that we may see the Jays make a move with, with the bullpen? Um, I know you and Kevin talked about it before he came on the show, I believe, and uh, the only way you can get Nate Pearson back up here is if someone goes in the IL, I believe. Do you, do you think there's any chance of that, uh, of that at all happening here? Well, I would be very curious as to what happened with Chad Green, right? Because Chad Green didn't pitch on Wednesday, wasn't available, was experiencing some shoulder uh, discomfort, soreness, whatever the term was. And you know, I asked John Schneider specifically about that after the game on Wednesday, and he said, well, he's going to get some treatment on Thursday, and then we're going to reevaluate things. So I, I read between the lines on that, and I don't know this, but – I would guess that there was at least a possibility that they'd have Nate Pearson here just in case they have to make a move with Chad Green. Uh, obviously, you want Chad Green to be healthy, 
But if he's going to need a few days, and this isn't just, okay, a couple of days of rest and he's good, then the way they're set up in the bullpen with Bowden Francis needing to essentially be paired with Yariel Rodriguez because of the workload concerns around him, you almost have to make a move, right? Mm -hmm. So I I think the Blue Jays, uh, unless they – uh, unless they were certain that it was going to be a very short stay or just a couple more days, excuse me, before Chad Green was ready, then I feel like they might be might be forced into a move, even though they don't might not necessarily want to make one. Alec Manoa pitches. Is it fr- is Saturday? Alec pitches. I, be- I believe it's Saturday. Okay. What What are their expectations for him right now with with each of these stars? Do they have a number? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously performance would be mm-hmm. great, but do they have a, a, a sort of a checklist they're looking at with him? And what might the next step be for Alec, you know, if in fact this, this start goes okay? Well, I think the initial one in Dunedin was uh, a bit erratic, and that was, okay, you just got back on the mound. We'll, we'll push aside everything else and take the next step. And then the last time out in Buffalo was more – consistence with the strikes you know from a physical standpoint everything seems to be checking off well the quality of stuff is there next time out it's to he's got to start executing a little bit better i think that's the blue just keep want to keep on adding pitches and pushing him closer and closer to 100 and he's he's getting there uh, i'm not sure the exact number for the next one i think it might be 80 85 somewhere in that range but he, the execution piece is the one that they need to start seeing a little bit more of. And as soon as he starts pairing all those things, the feeling good physically, the workload build up, the velocity and quality of stuff matching up with execution, then at that point he's knocking on the door and then the Blue Jays have some decisions to make. Shy, really yeah. good of you to uh, join us so much. Uh, stay warm yeah, yeah. Uh, in Try. San Diego. Try. Try. I know it's going to be and, hard. Uh, yeah, I know. You know it's, I, it's, I, I appreciate your your thoughts on that. I'll uh, I'll do my best yeah. to not revel in the, too much. Uh, yeah, and make, yeah, just make sure you've got your sunglasses. Did you go for <laughs> where did you go for a run day? Did you go for a run around the uh, not around the naval base because you can't go there? But did you go for a run around the bay? Uh, I haven't gone for a run yet because uh, I was had to get some work done this morning. But I'm hoping to sneak one in before I get to the ballpark. I just go along the the marina here. Awesome, <laughs> awesome man. It's beautiful. Have man. a great run. Yeah, have fun. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, boys. Have a great weekend. Take care. You too. Shai DeVita, our MLB insider with sports. And that was it's just such a great. I, I, I wonder with Alec, because I know we're up against it here. Yeah. I, I wonder with Alec, what, what if the first, what if the five guys are legit? None of them get hurt. What do you do with Alec? He's employee number, what is it, six or whatever? I don't even know what his uniform number is. I, that's the way I look at it. Um, I think. Well, I mean, I don't know. I was going to say maybe he becomes B- Bowden Francis, but. I mean, they're not gearing him up to be that. And you don't want him. No, and you don't want to, like, you want to have I'm, some sort I, of. Yeah, because it's sink or command. That's what it is. I mean, when Shy was talking there, I've talked to enough people around Alec to know that that's not the graduation point. The graduation is how do you command do you... arm side to a righty and backdoor it to a righty? That's with the fastball. Yeah. If he can do that, everything else will take care of itself. Because they think they figured out the velocity and all I that do stuff find with it conditioning. Odd. And... I do find it odd that he's not spending any time around the team in Buffalo. Maybe that's just me. Like he's pitching, and then he's up here, and and I, you know, it's close enough, and he's got access to everything. I just find that really odd. I just find that really yeah, odd. Yeah, I just have, I I'm intrigued to know how they handle this. Yeah, but because, I don't know because I, once he's ready, he's going to want to pitch in the big leagues, no? I mean, my thought is that those things generally work themselves out. Uh, that's fair. But um, I, I don't know. If, if, if Gossman has, I don't want to say turn the corner, if he's healthy, if Kikuchi stays the same, you're not going to screw with Barrios or Bassett. Nope. I don't know. John Schneider is manager of the Blue Jays. You know what? We'll ask him when he joins us. John Schneider joins us next at Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590 The Fan and Sportsnet. 940 will be the first pitch tonight as the Jays start a three-game series against the San Diego Padres in America's finest city. That's what they call it. I do believe they call it America's finest city. Yariel Rodriguez takes the bump for the Blue Jays. Matt Waldron.
for the Padres. The Padres, after uh, kind of underachieving for the past couple of years, are, are, are quietly, quietly kind of putting it together this year, um, which is odd considering all the changes they've made and everything. Yeah. Um, Chata's been good. Tatis Jr.'s been good. Yeah. Their pitching's been solid. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's really a good it's it's really a good lineup. I listen. I'm like I said the other day. I why well, I love interleague ball now. I, I think it's tremendous. I'm I'm I am looking forward to seeing the uh, yeah, me the too. Jays in that ballpark. The pods are eleven and ten. Uh they're six and four in their last ten games. Their run differentials plus twelve. They're five and six at home. It's early in the year, but um, should be. It should be a terrific series. Let's bring in John Schneider. He is the manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. John, thanks. Look at that. Look at the <laughs> background there. Blue sky in San Diego. A little under the weather. I apologize for that. Ah, uh, that's okay. Luca, that's okay. Shy told us it's cold there today. That it, I, I believe it got down to fifteen, or it's at fifteen Celsius. Yeah, cold. Yeah. Cold. yeah, it's beautiful here every day. Um, Matt Waldron, how? much of a i'm not going to say concern but the fact that the dude throws a knuckleballer and i mm -hmm. think until he threw a knuckleballer last year we hadn't seen anybody throw it in the majors in like two years um <laughs> how do you approach this game if, if you're if you're a hitter yeah i mean it's uh it's a little different obviously with that pitch um but i think you have to approach it the same way we've been approaching everyone the last couple you know the last couple games uh, especially at home um, it's all about getting a good pitch, getting in zone, and, and trying to put a good swing on it. So no matter what the pitch is, uh, it's it's about getting it in the zone and, and trying to do some damage. Um, I hate using that word, sorry, damage, but trying to put a good swing on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really no different than anyone else. John, have you liked the way your lineup went through nine is looking? You know, obviously Dalton Varsha, we'll, we'll talk about him a little bit later. But just as a whole, one through nine, you know, not everybody's the same. Do you like the way... You know, their bats are going, you know, they compete. I think that's the one thing you can take away from every single one of their bats is they're not an easy out here lately. Do you like what you're seeing so far? Yeah, I do. You know, I mean, we've been saying it since spring training to where, you know, it's going to be a collective approach, but everyone's going to be a little bit different in how they go about it. And I think that uh, right now, you know, we're not only seeing a lot of pitches, we're getting the big hits. Um, and I, I like the way it's kind of rolling out right now from, uh, from one through nine, everyone's kind of doing their part and, uh, not trying to do too much. So hopefully we can kind of continue to, uh, you know, roll that out on this road trip. Yeah, John, they don't hit a bunch of home runs as, as you well know. Is that, is that a worry for you as a manager? Do you have to try and manage different? I know in the last seven games, you're still in more bases. You're fourth in baseball and stolen bases with six. Like you can tell you're making an effort just because. You know, sometimes, especially at home, maybe the ball's not carrying. Maybe certain guys are just not, you know, squaring up baseballs. I, what, I think you're 22nd in total bases. You're 22nd in, at bats between homers at 38. Like, that's a that's a pretty big number. Is that a worry for you guys? Do you think it's just early and guys are going to get better at that and the guys that are supposed to hit homers will start hitting them? Yeah, it's not a worry. But, you know, I don't – by any, by any uh, stretch of the imagination right now, it's uh, – you hate saying it's early, you know, you got some games underneath you, you know, under your belt, but I think that the guys that are going to hit homers are going to hit homers. Now, are we going to, you know, break any league records in home runs? No, I don't think so. Not at this rate, but I think guys that are going to hit homers are going to hit their homers. Um, so it's not, it's not concerning. You know what I mean? I think guys understand how we, how we're built to win games. And, uh, but at the same time, we still, we still want guys to, to be dangerous. We still want guys to, you know, understand where there's times to try to, you know, hit the ball with authority. There's times to try to move a guy over. Um, but no, we're not, we're not worried about it. Guys that are going to hit him, they're going to hit him. Um, and again, whether it's at, at home or on the road, I don't really think it, it has uh, that much of a difference. John, for a manager, when your team's not hitting homers, especially the first four guys and the expectations for those four, first four guys are to hit quite a few home runs when they're not, is it hard for you to stay out of it? And what I mean by that is, you know, Vladdy with runners in scoring position is not real good. He's getting a lot of chances because of what the bottom order they're doing and what the first guy's doing. They're getting on base. They're giving him chances and at bats with runners in scoring position. He hasn't been real good at that. But Justin Turner has. Right? Is it is it very hard this time of the season? Because I hate saying the word early. Like they they're, they're professionals. They understand what they are supposed to do, and 
you know, what they should be doing this time of the year. But is it hard for you as the managers to stay out of that and go, they are what they are in the positions they're hitting in and that will take off and we're going to go as far as they take us? Yeah, we're talking about, you know, when you look at the top four of our lineup, you're talking about George, you know, Vlad, Bo, and JT. You're talking about really good hitters. So yeah. I think, you know, it's uh, it's a matter of time. You know, if, if we can get Vlad or JT or Bo up with runners on base uh, multiple times a game, Odds are we're gonna do we're gonna do pretty good. So I think it's uh, <laughs> it's just a matter of time really before they all kind of start clicking. And uh, you know, it like you said, it is it is early, it is early. Mm. Um, I don't like that either. But I mean, it's we're talking about really good hitters, man. And uh, you know, it's just a matter of time before they start getting those hits. Yeah, John. Uh... They've gotten them, but I mean consistently. Absolutely right. Uh... Have you heard anything on on Chad Green? Will there be any further examination needed, or and and what are the possibilities that uh, we may see another, you know, we may see another pitcher with the team in in San Diego, just in case? Um, he was better yesterday, thrown at the field, and um, you know we'll see how he is today. There's there's no there's no uh, plans for any other you know testing or anything like that right now. Um, you know, so we'll see how he kind of is after he gets to the ballpark and plays catch and, and kind of go from there, but no one else is, is scheduled to meet us. Um, you know, hoping for, hoping for the, you know, best news out of Chad today and he's ready to roll. Yeah. Before we start moving on with the pitching, I want to, I want to sort of clean up the hitting there. And there is a guy that's raking like Dalton Varsho looks like, I think his pace, I think his pace is really good, John. Like just, uh, it's not, it doesn't look robotic. I don't know about what you're seeing, but. I used to be one of those robotic guys. You work so hard off the field. You're trying to make sure it translates on the field, and you just want to make sure that every part is where it was when I was off the field and the ball was ending up where, you know, you ultimately wanted to end up. What are you seeing from him? What do you like from him? And any chance because of the way he's hitting, you might move him into that five spot again and sort of let him help out when it comes to runners and scoring position and those kind of things. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, Var, you kind of hit the nail on the head, Kev. I mean, he he's moving very efficiently. He's giving himself time to do some really good things with his swing. Um, something he's been working on all, for a long time, off-season, spring training now. You know, him and G and, and Donnie uh, in particular have been really working on that. And like you said, it's not robotic. He's, he's, he's moving very well. Um, this is kind of what Dalton can do. And I think that, you know, we understand that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really starting to show. He's, he hits the ball extremely hard. And uh, he's had a really good, he, he had a really good homestand. You know, he had, he had a good handful of games. And people kind of forget that he had a really good spring training, too, doing this. And then you get off to a slow start in 15, 15 at bats, and everyone says what happened. But this is kind of what Varsha's been doing. And um, and thrilled that he's getting the results right now. So um, the second part of your question, yeah, he's hitting fifth tonight. Nice. Glad I asked. Do we have uh, – what are the plans for Yariel tonight? Will will they be any different than the uh, than his first start? I don't think so. It'll be, it'll be roughly the same. We're going to try to continue to build him up, but without getting him into, you know, 100 pitches, that, that kind of thing. Um, so when you talk about pitch count, yeah, it'll be a little bit more. Uh, but we'll just see how he is. We'll see how he's going, you know, um, what, what his stuff is doing and how he's – how he's responded to this lineup. It's a good lineup here and um, kind of react accordingly. But the, uh, the fact that he has a few more pitches to work, to work with uh, in terms of pitch counts tonight is a good thing. Yeah, John, I asked around about him, you know, with PD and stuff about the arm angles and those kind of things. And, and you look at what he did there, the three and two thirds inning, the 68 pitches. I'm assuming that, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to dig into anything, I know he threw strike one 69% of the time. That's really good. League average is right around 61%. So if you're doing anything above that with the stuff that he has with the multitude of pitches that he has, but is there anything that's sort of refining start to start, right? If he's got 70 pitches, you'd love to see that 70 pitches go further than three and two thirds. Is there anything that right. one specific thing that you're looking for, whether it's the timing of that slow little leg kick or the arm angles or maybe where the catcher sets up. Is there sort of any one little thing that you may see or like to see further, you which know, would make him better? Yeah. I mean, good question. It's not one, it's not one specific thing. You know, he's got, he's got great stuff. I think right now we're still in the, in the process of him figuring out what his stuff does, you know, in relation to um, what, one another, you know, his pitches, you know, so I think it's just about kind of how he, how he deploys them. You know, you hate, you hate, you know, saying it like that, but I mean, he's got good stuff. 
it's not anything really. It's just about how can I maybe, you know, mix these, these pitches uh, together a little bit more efficiently and get a little bit deeper in the games. That, that's kind of what we're talking to him about. Um, but it has nothing to do with stuff or action on the stuff. Um, you know, we're really excited about what he what he has and what he can do. So just trying to really stay on the attack and uh, and try to get it done a little bit quicker. John, with Jordan Romano, is there anything you'd like to see from him or hear from him that would give you confidence in him that would allow you to use him back-to-back days? Yeah, I think just where we are now in relation to where he was, you know, just a few days ago. You know, I think that uh, this was kind of part of the part of the plan. Uh, with him and with Swanee to where you you know you get him into a game against New York off day and then kind of and then kind of have him ready to roll, but in talking to Jordan and talking to Eric, you know they're they're ready for it. Um, would have loved if they were one of them was available or one more was available um, on Wednesday at home, but I, they're they're ready for it and they knew this is part of the process. So um, don't need to hear anything else from them. Uh, last question before he let you run. Alec Manoa is going to start a AAA. What are the what are the expectations for him and John? If it goes according to Hoyle, what would be the next step for Alec? Yeah, I mean, ex- expectations for him are just go, you know, we want him to be effective and efficient, you know, and that sounds very broad, but that's exactly what we told him before before he left. Um, and he knows what that looks like. We know what that looks like, you know. It's just we want to see – 80 pitches in the sixth inning as opposed to the to the fourth or fifth you know we want to want to see his stuff in his own and and attacking hitters um so that's kind of what his stuff is back his stuff is there you know and i think him him using it appropriately is is the next step and that leads to the efficiency um and then after after you know this one it's it's kind of wait and see you know wait and see where we are wait and see where where he is um performance is part of it right now for alec he knows of that and uh and kind of make another uh you know, make another decision in a few days, you know? So uh, that's kind of it. It's it's very open-ended and, um, you know, excited to see what he does tonight. John, last one. Uh, honestly, we, before we let you go, uh, it, with <laughs> with Eric Swanson, you mentioned Eric Swanson, I, and and sometimes I think people, because he does, he's not a super hard thrower, really don't know what you're looking for as a fan or, say, as an ex-catcher like you are or his manager or his pitching coach. Sort of, I think the question is, how do you know when he's good? And how will you know, sort of, you know, that inning to use him in when, you know, there's some unpredictability there, I, I think is, is there a certain thing that will tell you that he has got his great stuff and you can throw him no matter where you're at in an order? Yeah. Um, well, you know, for one, you know, we, in a perfect world, he's not pitching the ninth inning on, on Wednesday, be Jimmy or be Chad or Jordy if they were available. Um, but I think... When when he's good and, and it's hard, he you know, it's you see the, the velo, it's 93, 94, um, hides the ball really well. It's coming from a really weird angle with Swanee. And you put that heater uh, with a split that's basically in the zone. Um, it's really, really tough to adjust as a hitter. So uh, different than Gosman split, you know, Gauze is more of a chase, you know, but I think with Swanee, he's throwing it in the zone. And it's tough to it's tough to adjust when that thing is going this way and his heater is going that way. And um, and it's just, you know, very, very deceptive. So that's when we know he's good. Um, you know, his his track record speaks for itself. His trust level is is way high for me, for Pete, uh, for us. So it's, um, you know, it's about putting him in the right spots. And, um, you know, we're, we're confident he's going to get the job done. Nice. Is that a battleship behind you? It is. Kind of cool, right? It is. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. I was like... I was noticing it over your, uh, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. There, there you go. go. The battleship. There wow. you go. Well, there's, there's a beautiful. Ship. There's a ship beside you. John, we yeah. appreciate your time. Thanks so much for this, man. Be well and uh, rest the voice. Yeah, good luck. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry about the voice. Thank you, guys. Good good catching up. Talk to you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Travel safely. Bye. That is John Schneider, manager of the Blue Jays. Can you see that little ship in the sea? Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to throw the, the Swanson question in there because i i wanted him to answer why he used him that, yeah. that that's the whole point that, that's the conversation right is i wanted people to understand what is going through why you use certain people in certain situations it's not also always because you want to it's because you don't have a choice right and sort of i think the answer he's given you is 
in when I talk to him and I talk to other people that are around John and I talk to Pete Walker, it's sort of they try to solidify the ninth inning. So if mm-hmm. you don't got three or four dudes that re- you rely on to pitch the the ninth and the eighth inning, you sort of have to pick a guy that you could put in the ninth inning and then you work backwards. Yes. And I think that's sort of what he did, right? By getting him up in the eighth inning, told everybody what they needed to know that Chad Green was not available. Yeah. So I think that's sort of... It's one thing for me to say it. It's another thing for somebody else to tweet things of why Chad Green's not doing this. It's another thing to hear the manager say it. So I wanted to make sure I got that in there so people would understand, right, sort of the certain guys that I think he really relies on in the eighth and the ninth inning because of who he's got now is probably not always going to be Eric Swanson. And there's nothing wrong with that. You need those guys that you can mix in, you know, the sixth, the seventh, and occasionally the eighth. Because you don't have certain guys, I just think that's yeah. intriguing, and there's a lot goes into it. It's just not you sitting over there trying to figure out a way to screw the game up. It's, it doesn't always work. No, out. and we also have to bear in mind that as much as you know, we talk about analytics, and how I have a little bit of fun with it, um, I would say you're probably a little more strident than I am with it. But as much as we talk about analytics... Uh, not every decision is analytically based. Sometimes a dude does come up to you and go, I said, Skip, I can't go today. Yeah. And and again, we what do we talk about? Be honest with me. Don't don't make me look bad. If you can't go, let me know. And I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that John Schneider or Pete Walker, yeah. they know who's good to go. And before the game, mm-hmm. they go, mm-hmm. hey. Are you good to go today? Yeah, yeah. And every, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I know, for, I know for absolutely. I know for a fact that Pete Walker, that is sort of his pregame ritual, yes. is to walk around every guy that is available yes. and say, Are you really available? Yeah. It's just not doesn't have doesn't have anything to do with how many days separation between outings. Yeah. It has to do with sometimes a dude just don't feel good. And they need to know that. That's what I said. Going into games, you sort of try to solidify the ninth. If we have the lead here, we'd rather pitch this guy because he's done it before. I don't want to get a Cabrera in there. I don't want to get a Mays in there. I sure don't want a Bowden Francis in there. Yep. And you have to work up to that inning and sort of work backwards from there. So it's just it it's good to let fans hear that from the actual guy that's making the decision. And that's why I wanted to throw that question. Dalton Varshow hitting fifth tonight. Yeah, it makes sense. I you, know, you joke around about the the first four guys and and I, I just I just think when guys aren't getting it done and I, I'm sure you'll start to see John do this, right? They, they, they're putting a lot on, on the plates of the first four guys. And I'm sure Vladdy keeps hitting the buck 43 with runners in scoring position. And Justin Turner is hitting over 300 in that situation. And the bats are more in the two hole. You will see adjustments. I know John well enough to know. We've seen it. Yeah. He will make the adjustments. So, I mean, I made a, a point before the Yankee series that uh, I... I would love to see a little more hate in the AL East. I'd like to see a little more hmm. back and forth in the AL East. Um, and uh, maybe it happens. Maybe it happens at some point. As I said, I think I think Juan Soto is going to get under somebody's... He's I gonna, think he already has. He's going to get in somebody's grill at some point. Uh, and, and that'll be great fun. It will be. But... Um, you know, the last, and Aaron Judge was here last year, and we saw the sideways glance. Fish eyeing. Oh, the fish eyeing. All oh, the <laughs> fish eyeing. I still don't get but anyhow. You don't look. Well, no, I get it, but I mean. Fish eye. It's like, why, why does the only fish do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, because you ain't going to turn your head. You're going to fish eye the guy and stand at, th- at first base. Yeah, but, it's like, it's like you don't want to be. But if fish, I make it obvious by okay, turning anyhow, my head. Yeah, I was just, I was, anyhow, whatever. You didn't get it, so I had to explain well, it Well, I to know you. what it is. I just don't know why they call it fish eye. It's like side. You ever seen a fish do it? Well, no, fish don't have heads. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Move on. Anyhow, um, actually, they do have heads. <laughs> just like, the is point like... is that mi- this was said during the Yankees broadcast on Wednesday by Michael Kay and uh, Flash and John Flaherty. This is on the Yes Network broadcast. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because I said, you know, they like to have a little bit of uh, aggro with the Yankees, and it, it's 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 not there, and... You know, even the judge stuff last year, that kind of died. Could Michael Kay and John Flaherty be deliberately planting 
a seed of aggravation in this series. This is what they said on Wednesday. You know what's curious to me, though, John? We, we just saw Blue Jays in the Bronx. And what we watched was a completely different team than the one we've seen here in Toronto. The one in New York did not foul off the amount of pitches that this team does. It's like it's a different team in this ballpark. Now, home field advantage, there is something to that. But why would it manifest itself in the ability to foul off tough pitches? Well, and you think about Carlos Rodon last night. He had a good fastball, right? I mean, he had good stuff last night and just had a tough time putting away certain hitters in that Blue Jay lineup. The pause at the end is the best. Now, you could understand it if, okay, the next time you see them after you saw them in the Bronx was a month and a half later. Well, this is a week later, and it's a completely different approach and a completely so there you go. The suggestion is that somebody's giving them the sign. I mean, say it out loud. That's exactly what they're they're trying to say. Obviously, yeah. those two or have had conversations with somebody in, in, the, in the clubhouse. Of course, they've somebody obviously said, somebody said why, or I'm sure it's one of the pitchers. Yeah, of course, that has said why are they fouling it off. They they haven't been fouling that ball. Previous hitters have not been fouling that off. Man. Did you why check is the this team cans? doing that? Did you check the garbage? Why is cans this team those? doing that? That's nonsense. I mean, the the Blue Jays are having trouble. Yeah, I don't know about that. But yeah, they're, 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 hey, look, that, this is what I think. The, again, we talk about them not being able to hit homers. They're not hitting homers because they're having trouble with velocity. It's a one through nine thing. I mean, there you can sprinkle in a couple of guys who are having success off of velocity, but it ain't many. That's for me why they're fouling that off. They know Rodon. Rodon's had a little trouble finishing guys off anyway most of the year. That's why his pitch counts went way up. Like he's effectively wild. It's mm -hmm. all over the place. He's a very hard thrower. And you got to let that thing travel with two strikes. So, yeah, look, I think it's, yeah, you know, it's the Yankees and, and you oh, it's know. It's good. The, I'm the, glad people are the, doing it. I the, mean, you know, the, the Yankees the are, players aren't going to do it. Yankees, Let's let the media do it. The Yankees are perfect, you know. It's, I see now you're getting a yeah, little They're, they're getting perfect. A little I it's, like it. That's how you do it. No, I, I just think it's good, clean fun. You know, it's, boy, it is. it's boing, boys being boys. Stuff. Huh. Yeah, it's good, clean fun. I like I like how they started it. I wonder. Yeah, you wonder. <laughs> you, know, say, I, I, you know. Why don't you just say, you know, Aaron Boone said that in the fourth <laughs> inning, you guys should talk about this. <laughs> and actually, know, Rodon told me. Actually, Rodon <laughs> told me. While you guys are on the air, if you're looking to fill time. Anyhow, no way. I love me that's Michael Kay and Fly. No, no, that's I good. That wang. is like the, good. Like the Yankees, you know, you're never supposed to fell off a, a pitcher for that the Yankees. Good. Oh, that's no good way. fun. It's good fun. I, I said it because I wanted I you to explain why the Jays fell off so many pitchers. Because they're having trouble with velocity. They're, they guess quite a bit. I mean, they got as many khakis as the, as the Yankees do. Like they're game planning, trying to figure out who throws what and what count and that kind of thing. But you mentioned the Soto thing. If I'm a catcher, I'd get tired of that. What? Uh, that that taking that pitch and turning around and ask the umpire. You know, basically he's saying, you know who I am, right? If I take it, it's a ball. What if like, I'm a veteran catcher, I, I'm tired of that. You know what? Like I, I'm starting something. Well, what That's I what like, I'm trying to think. What I like about him. You do? What I like about Soto. That he what hits I, the ball to the moon? I like that he hits the ball <laughs> to the moon. Yeah. I yeah. also like the fact that, uh, you know, I like the nod looking out at the pitcher. Good pitch. Do you know, you really? Got, oh, yeah. It's like, it's like you know, I, again, i got to ask this question, no, and it's a it's serious great. question. You giving that dude a half a billion dollars to walk? Because a lot of the times at me, he looks like he's trying to walk. I give it. Dude, that you give that guy that much money? I'm giving that guy half a billion dollars. Well, yeah. I mean, he ain't a very good defender either, so well, are I'm, you? Uh, Tough. I'm giving that guy Tough. half. We'll I'm, see. Uh, I stick him in we'll left field he and he can it. be a bad defender. I don't know if I necessarily want him in right field. I'll stick him in left field. The ball's over your head in left field half the time. It's we'll gone see. in you. Yeah, I, I, now, you know, look who his agent is. His agent is Scott Boris. We all know what's happened lately. Maybe he doesn't get half a billion. Maybe he settles for $435 million. He gets more in Trout? Yeah. Huh. He's younger. He's better player in Trout. Uh, no, I... Uh, you know as well, well as I you, do. Well, okay. No, 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 no. You know as well as I do. He's younger. Age matters. I think it's deal. all about the suitor, you right? It's when you got the two New York teams trying to get you, and you got those two battling for one guy. Well, that's, we that's how you get more than trouble. We don't know if you know, you talk to people. We don't know if the Yankees are going to try to resign him, or if, or how serious they're going to be trying. This is to what this him. is what I think. I think they're going to have a tough time 
giving him more money than Cole or Trev- Judge. Or Judge, yes. That's what I think, and he's going to be asking for more. 940 is the first pitch tonight. The Jays are taking on the San Diego Padres. Mark Grant is a Padres TV analyst and a former MLB pitcher. He's one of our favorites. He's going to join us. I'm going to talk to him about Matt Waldron and this knuckleball thing and how big a deal it is, and Parker's not worried about it. <laughs> we'll see what Mark Grant says. This is Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590, the fan and Sportsnet. 9.40 Eastern Time will be the first pitch tonight on Sportsnet 590, the fan and Sportsnet, as the Toronto Blue Jays begin a three-game series against the San Diego Padres, part of a seven-game road trip that will take them from San Diego to Kansas City and then back to Toronto to face the Los Angeles Dodgers Ooh. Uh, in a week's time. Um, let's not waste any time. Let's bring in our next guest. He's Mark Grant. Padres TV analyst, former MLB pitcher. Mark, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. We trust that you're doing well. You got your Johnson on Chiefs jersey on. Oh, <laughs> nice. Charlestown, yeah. You're Putting so, on the foil. Yeah, <laughs> you're such a hockey guy. You're such a hockey guy. Uh, I uh, love I love puck. I always have. Um, real quick before we get in, mm-hmm. if I had to do it all over again, I grew up in the Midwest. I yep. grew up in Joliet, Illinois. I played all three sports as a freshman. Gave up the other two to play baseball. But if I had to go back in the time machine and do it all over again, hockey would have been my winter sport. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. I should have played hockey. You should have. You have a hockey player's mentality, right? You look like a hockey player. I played peewees as a kid, and I was a defenseman. So I kind of, you know. Oh, yeah. mm. Tough guy. I mean, look at those forearms. (laughs) They're huge. Man, that's crazy. (laughs) You're holding a baseball, which is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Barker's got a question for yeah. you about tonight's starter. Yeah, with Waldron okay. tonight, when I when I was looking up what he th- there it is. When I was looking, yeah, but he doesn't abuse that. Like it's not like if I'm a hitter, I'm gonna go up and look for that. And he's got four other pitches that he throws. You know, I know yeah. he th- I looked it up. He looked he throws the the knuckleball thirty six percent of the time, and he's got four other that he throws about the same amount of time. My question yeah. would be, if you were giving advice to the Jays, could I just go up there and ignore the knuckleball? And look for one of his other pitches. Well, good question. And and Matt Waldron has said this. He's not a knuckleball pitcher. He is a pitcher with a knuckleball. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And Kevin, you made the reference to the usage. It's kind of gone up a little bit with time. Uh he, recently it's been kind of having like too much rotation on it. So it kind of just rolls up there. Mm-hmm. And Kevin, I'm sure you've hit against knuckleball guys. So the less rotation, more wind resistance more dancing but you know what i that's a good question if i was a hitter like any breaking ball for a pitcher and you could tell me this if he's throwing a breaking ball his secondary pitches yeah and he can't land it for a strike i'm probably just going to eliminate it from the arsenal and look for the old number one now waldron has shown some progress to where when he i mean he he's 93 mm-hmm. he can get a little a little fuzz there he's not like a knuckleball pitcher who tries to dot his fastball down and away at like 86, 87. He's got some fuzz too, which is good. So I guess the mentality as a hitter is, hey, you know what? Prove to me that you could land this. Um, but then on the the flip side then is if he gets ahead with that or that, and then he drops this right here, I mean, then you got to protect. And it's like, if he's anywhere close, all bets are off, I would think. Yeah, it's the overthinking it. And now listening to you talk, if if you're saying this, I can't imagine what the what the Blue Jays are sitting in their clubhouse in their locker room going, you know, he's got five different ones. He throws his knuckleball. I'm like, like it's yeah. just your head's gonna pop off when, you know, as well as anybody. They they don't see ball hit ball anymore. It's like you gotta look window, you gotta look window yeah. that's moving. Like you got a certain velocity when if it was me, I'm looking right down the middle for one of the three fastballs he throws because I can't hit the knuckleball. If he throws a good one anyway, you ain't hitting it. And it put me in a slump, yeah. so I'm just not looking for it. But it's never that simple. Yeah, it is. And, and Kevin, I, I marvel at each and every game when hitters, I mean, these perennial hitters, these guys who are hitting 300 every year, even, even 280, 290, how they square baseballs up consistently for hits. Mm-hmm. And you – Tell me, because I watch every game. I mean, it it seems like there's no such thing as a fastball count anymore. Everything's spinning up there. Cutters, sliders, curveballs. You, you can't sit 2-0 fastball anymore unless you've got a guy who's blowing 98 to 100 and can locate. 
maybe you see one of those guys, but I'll tell you what, uh, it's become a spin league. That's what I see. Yeah, and you know the bad part of that is, too, is not a lot of guys can hit velocity. So if I even mm-hmm. get in a fastball count, if I can't hit velocity, now what do I do? Like, do I take yeah. it? You know, now I let them back in the count. Now they can throw the back foot stuff. Like, they can change speeds. It's a it's a very tough thing. Before we let Jeff jump in there, because I know he's itching to get in over here. He's very quiet, and that's rare about him being quiet. You know, <laughs> T- Tatis Jr. has gotten off. the conversation. Well, Tatis Jr. gotten off to a good start, right? He's sort of the yeah. five-tool guy. You know, he's, uh, he's had a really good week. What's he doing well, and can he maintain this and be a pain in the butt for everybody in the National League? I think he can, and uh, Fernando has come a long way, not only offensively but defensively. You know, here's a kid who was brought up as a shortstop, played a shortstop position in the big leagues, caused some waves, made some great plays, made his name known as a shortstop. Then we're going to send you to right field. He had the mentality that spring training, they sent him out there, said, I'm going to, I'm going to take it upon myself to be the best. And what do you know? He ended up winning a platinum glove. Uh, He just got better and better and better. Um, Using the whole field like this whole team, uh, Jeff and Kevin, this this whole concept, or this, I shouldn't say concept, eh, maybe a concept, but philosophy of this Padres team this year has been really fun to watch. Situational type uh, hitting. Guys just aren't coming out of their shoes, you know, in a hitter's count. They're, they're, we're going first to third. We, like I have anything to do with this team. <laughs> they, <laughs> they're going from first to third, hitting a lot of singles, but I'll tell you what, being aggressive on the base path. So like Fernando, what's he doing well? You know what? The home runs will come, but I tell you what, just avoiding strikeouts and putting the ball in play. I think that's been the ha- the whole MO of this Padres team. Mm-hmm. You know, I had, uh, I know, I think the Padres were nine and 11 in spring training. And I spoke to a friend of mine who was doing some scouting out in Arizona. And I just, asked him a general question you know what'd you see that really impressed you what do you like who do you have a good feeling about he said mm-hmm. you know what i know they don't have soto he said i know they don't blake snell but he said man i really like what the padres are doing and then he embarked into about a 20 minute discussion of jackson merrill tell us what we should look for from jackson merrill mm-hmm. because this will be the first time we've seen him in person yeah well a very happy birthday to jackson merrill he turns 21 today wow and yes he um i tell you he's, he's fun to watch here's another shortstop who went to center field. He played, I think he played one or two games to the left, then they moved him over to center field. What you can find is a kid who's very athletic. He's got a great idea at the plate, knows the strike zone. Not a not a power guy, but he's a guy who's got good bat-to-ball skills that I think the pop will come. Um, certain situations, maybe certain counts. Uh, but a guy who uses the whole field. This kid is very, very confident, too. And I know you guys have been around the baseball and other sports. You know, there's a difference between a guy being, you know, very, very cocky and not, um, you know, uh, kind of um, the guy who cares. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cocky, just like, oh, my ability is going to take No, no, no. Jackson Merrill is confident, and he is a gamer. He is baseball 101, and he wants to learn. He wants to get better. You guys know that when athletes have it, I think Jackson Merrill has it. Covers great ground at center field. He's going to make some nice plays and put together good at-bats. Um, he'd been batting down in the order, which I think is a very crucial part of the order because he took it upon himself. Oh, I'm batting ninth? Okay, he didn't let his ego step in the way. He's going to contribute. The big key for him is flipping that order. Mm-hmm. Hitting ninth, maybe two outs to get to the top of the order. So maybe one, two, and three can do some damage. So I think you're going to see a complete player. He's, he's, and, and also, he's a good kid. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. With all the focus on the Dodgers in that division, has this been, has that been good for the Padres, actually? Mm-hmm. That question. they're kind of really under the radar this year? I mean, on the, yeah, look, I, you got the National League champion Diamondbacks in the same division. Sure. Absolutely. No, no question about that. I think the Padres uh, are a team to be reckoned with, although the, the Dodgers are the team to beat in the West. And I think the Padres early on have proven. And once again, the season is young. The Dodgers are in first base. The, uh, the Padres are maybe a game out. But they have proven that they uh, they can hit against their pitchers. Uh, they're just as good defensively, the Padres are. Uh, fundamentally, fundamentally sound as the Dodgers are. Uh, they took two out of three at Dodger Stadium. I know the Padres didn't see glass now. But uh, Gavin Stone was really throwing well. Uh, he threw the ball extremely well. So they got some good pitching. But, you know, even the late-inning guys, the Padres put together some pretty good at-bats against the Dodgers. We have yet to play the Diamondbacks. But that's a team that's young, energetic. I mean, that was proven last year with the team Tory Lovello had. But I think um, more focus on the Padres. 
Uh, yeah, I, th I think so, especially with the way they've started. Uh, there was a lot of people, I think, in spring training, guys, that uh, kind of question, you know, uh, with the way the roster is going to be constructed and with the starting pitching. And I, I don't know whether this was on your checklist, but when they acquired Dylan Cease before we went to Korea, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, what this does to a rotation mm -hmm. is just magnificent. So Padre fans can be happier with Dylan Cease in the rotation. How about well. the new How about the new manager, what he brings? Uh, you know, it just seemed like when you watched the Padres last year, for whatever reason, I, I, I hate to yeah. say they didn't look like they were having fun because they – I mean, right. you're making tons of money. You know, you clean it up and, and force yourself to have fun. But it just didn't <laughs> seem like they were all connected and wanted the same yeah. goal. How about that? Yeah. Has the new manager helped that part of it and just made the atmosphere around the team better? You know what? The general consensus is that a lot of guys on the team are happy. A lot, Not that they weren't unhappy last year. I mean, there's a lot of variables that go on in the clubhouse. I mean, sure. I love Bob Melvin. Bob Melvin is a very good manager. Only managers can do so much to get a team clicking. And a lot of people forget what happened the year before, you know, going to the NLCS. Um, with, and then the next year, just, things just didn't come to fruition. Mike Schilt is a very good communicator. Bob Melvin was a very good communicator. Um, but you guys know as well as anybody, you get a new voice in there. You get a guy who's got a good reputation as far as when he was with the Cardinals, Mike Schilt. The word on the street was that, you know, players loved him. They pl loved playing for him. And um, I, I think, I, I, you know, when it, when it comes down to fundamentals, I, I just see this team, you know, credit the the, the coaching staff, the, the, hitter, the hitting coaches. I have seen a drastic change in just the approaches, two-strike hitting, situational type hitting. So it filters down from Mike Schilt, who's – who's doing a great job and also the coaches as well. They're prepared as anybody. Yeah. To your point, they lead baseball and run scored. Like it's a big deal, yeah. right? You want to choke up. You want right. to, you'd rather hit the ball the other way than punch out. How right. about Machado? Like, you know, there's a, on, on the Blue Jays team, there's a guy that plays first there, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That we talk about all the time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he's just supposed to carry the world. And it's sometimes I think a little unfair, but I think Machado is a little sort of the same way. Just the, everything that goes into defense attitude sort of like the right-handed soto right it's like you how dare you throw me in if i take it it's a ball like it's just you know how's he been i know he's hitting well he's got you know in the yeah. week span you know this early in the season you look at a small sample size it's not what they've done the entire time it's like a week's worth of sample size and he's starting to hit and i think just his presence what's he bring and and how much does he mean to this team going where they want to go i marvel at what manny does each and every day and um this is this is a guy who's only dh'ing right now because he's still nursing that surgery he had on his elbow so defensively he could probably be back there later later this month but here is a guy who didn't start off well and he was the same manny machado i mean he's been around the block what eight ten years mm -hmm. now six eight ten years now uh manny knows he's good he knows he's going to turn it around he's got one of the sweetest right-handed swings in baseball and, and guys, I tell you what, every, I mean, he is so smooth at the plate uh, that I, I think other guys, they say, gosh, how does this guy do it? He squares more balls up. Uh, but I think Manny is also a guy who wins. He speaks, people listen because Manny kind of, the way I know him, and mm -hmm. I'm not in the clubhouse every day. Yeah. I have little spurts of, you know, conversations with Manny here and there. Hey, what's going on? All right, don't 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 forget the eggs and the milk. Um, <laughs> he, um, <laughs> uh, he he know you know he 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 plays the game the right way. Uh, he plays hard. He answers the bell. He wants to play every day. So yeah, Manny, uh, you know when he speaks, people listen, and the way he carries himself in the dugout in the clubhouse goes a long way. And um, I think Manny, in, in a nutshell. Uh, when he gets back defensively at third base and also swinging the bat, I think it's it's going to obviously help our help the club tremendously. Yeah, Mark, listen, really good of you to yeah. join us today. Thanks so much. Great to see you and uh, be well. And yeah, stay uh, warm. We'll us again. Well, good I heard there's you. a cold front. Yeah, so stay warm in San Diego. John Schneider <laughs> told us it was cold today. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, really? it's beautiful here today. It's clear. <laughs> it's sunny. It's yeah. the palm trees are waving in the wind. I wow. don't know if you can see it, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's That's terrible. Another... Hey, I love Toronto. Good city. I'm nice. Great people. Great fans. Hey, how's the Rogers Center looking? By the way, after all the it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It is nice. Is it? Except yeah. the ball don't carry. Hitters yeah. don't like yeah. it. Yeah. They also yeah, put in they, they put in something that sucks all the home <laughs> runs out of the game, though. Unfortunately, so. <laughs> It's not like the good old days. We're learning to uh, embrace run prevention oh, in Toronto, Mark. Yeah.
Yeah, it's tough. Run prevention. Right. Mm -hmm. Be well, my okay. friend. Yeah, it's good to see you. Good hey, luck. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. Be yeah, well. See you. It's Mark Grant, Padres TV analyst. Um, terrific. Uh, that's how he was as a player. Too, yeah. To talk to as a pitcher. He was great, great post game interview. Yeah. Um, Padres have shortstops all over the place. Yeah. Every position player, with the exception of catcher, I think, is a shortstop. Athletes. That's how you run prevent. And then on top of it, their best players are, are being their best players. They are. Which is, you know, again, I hate is, to keep bringing it around to the Blue Jays, but that's what the, the front yeah. office has been yelling and screaming about this team is the best players for the Jays got to be their best players. And this is why the Padres lead the the league and run scored is because they're they best are, players. They, if you look at their numbers, their numbers with uh, runners in scoring position, their runners, I, I mean, just all the sort of the underlying offensive numbers, the Padres are really, really good. And we didn't even ask Mark this, but Josh Hader's gone. The guy they have replacing it, him, Robert Suarez, has yeah. been lights out. Uh, they're fun. No, they are a fun team. And you know what? I, I mean, they're kind of, I've always kind of had a soft spot for the Padres. They're kind of a... Because they're in the same division with the Dodgers. That's why you have that's, a soft yeah, spot. Yeah, that's true, because I yeah. hate the Dodgers. Well, because they get their point. tails kicked all the time, but and it, they lose the division by like 25 it's a great. It's a great city. It's a great ballpark. And they are fun to watch. I've only... I haven't seen them that much this year, but I've, I've seen one I've seen one game. I think they're really fun to watch, and I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to this series. I, yeah. I really am. Yeah. It'll be a good test for Well, these it's going to be a handful. Like, they're going to have to. I just think it's funny that Mark was saying, when in doubt, don't swing hard. <laughs> I mean, everybody you talk to, to a man. When I was in the clubhouse walking around with the Blue Jays asking hitters, when you get in them counts, don't. Stay within your stealth. Stay in the big part okay. of the field. Don't get frisky and think you're going to hit a ball me, to the okay. moon to the pool side. Let me That's ask why you, that do damage. Why do you think John was saying, let you know, I hate you, saying the do damage part. Let me ask you a real. You're starting to tamper that down a little. Let me ask you a real dumbass question. I'm sure. Why is it so hard to do that? Because you're struggling. Yeah, and, but, and see, every, my, my point is. It's not so easy. So when you struggle, you uh, so do anything, any sport. Well, you, you know. Try you, harder. You, well, Yeah. Yeah. It says it's okay. Give it the old college try. Nobody says don't try so much. Yeah, don't throw it back so hard. a bit. Throttle yeah, don't, don't don't do that so much. Don't do I, it so hard. Don't swing so hard. Yeah, but my point is this is this is a, this, is, this is not a young team. It's not. Um, nothing else has worked. At some point, wouldn't you say you know maybe there's something to this? Yeah, maybe I, th I think the couple of guys that you're counting on are trying to get paid. I think there's something to that. Well, we talked. I do. Remember I do, what I do, Dan you know. O'Dowd said when we had him on? I mean. You know, I, I don't think they're paying for hits anymore. What did, what did, I don't uh, think they are. What did Dan say about multi-year contracts like the one Bobby Wood had? They create freedom, not expectations. Yeah, There's something to that. I'm not making excuses for them. I mean, they're no. still making a decent living like they ain't but, you know, they're homeless. But still, like you, you know, there's much money is being spent in the big leagues and how they're spending it and how they're giving it to certain guys for doing certain things. There's nothing things. wrong with me. You know what? There's yeah. nothing wrong with having your best players be happy. And how you make people happy? Money. Is one word. People are. That's what I said. People this hate is hearing what, that, but it is I true. Ask, I ask you the same question. I'll yep. continue to ask it. How's it get better? Because they ain't paying either one of them dudes this year. How's it get better, Jeff? I have. Because they don't have the answer. I've asked. They don't. Continue to do what you're doing. Like, it's all insane. Only, honestly, you know, <laughs> like, how, how does it get better? You know, That's my point. This is why we were saying in the, the only way, bring in two turners. Yeah, the only way it gets better. That, you, that have been paid already. The only way it gets better is if, in addition to Gossman and Bassett being good, Jose Brios becomes the Cy Young finalist. Uh, that's, it's hard, that's it's the hard only to way. Do, it's hard to do I that. I know, but I'm saying that, that you're asking me how does it's it get hard better? To run prevent. Yeah. It's hard. I know. And it's boring. But where. I'm talking about the offensive side. I'm not. Yeah. I'm talking about the everyday God, guys. I, mean, I don't know where the. I. I listen. They'll be better players, and they'll be their their best self if they're hitting. Yeah. It, it doesn't know it work the other way. Like you don't know. You know, Bo's not going to be an elite defender if he ain't hitting. It ain't worked that way. Vladdy the same way. So you need to hit Do first. You? I just don't know how it gets better. I just that's. I don't want to be the guy, but how? Should, how does it we, get better? Should we read anything into the fact? Now again, John Schneider told us Dalton Varsho is hitting fifth tonight, which is yeah, great. awesome. But thanks, John. Yeah, uh, but I could have told him that. <laughs> in his last two games, 
All right. Mm-hmm. Dalton Varsh was homered off a lefty. Yeah. <clears throat> he got a big hit off a lefty because uh, of a double. Yeah. <laughs> what does he... Yeah, I'll try to figure out how to ask this. What do you expect from him against a left-handed pitcher versus against a right? I think you got to be careful how much you use him. Right. I know everybody's yelling and screaming. Well, you know, you know, home run all one day. It doesn't work that way. Well, no, we I mean, we had a, that dis- we, we not had a, that discussion. He's not you. a great hitter. There's nothing wrong with that. He's not a great. He's a very streaky home run exit velocity guy, and it's in small samples. You want to maximize the sample, and it's not always against lefties. Like, just because he does it one game don't mean you're going to throw him out there the next game. Be it just doesn't work that way. Would you be concerned that he's facing a knuckleballer? I'd be concerned he's hitting fifth. You're not surprised. That's a run, that's a run be... producing spot. Ain't seventh yeah. and ain't eighth. It, what does that it's, suggest? That, that really that suggests they're to you that they're that's begging. What I, yeah, they're I, begging. Well, you wouldn't. I just read you these numbers. I can read them to you again. 22nd in total bases, 22nd in bats between homers at 38. Orioles are first in 21 per homer. That means they they hit a homer <laughs> 17 at bats fewer than the Jays do. They're 28 in average in runners in scoring position at 204. They're last in homers and runners in scoring position with a whopping one. The Orioles have eight. They're in first. They're, they're minus 17th run differential. Like, <laughs> these things, it's like Groundhog Day. Like, again, this is my point. Like, if this is... This will fluctuate. <laughs> like, and I will say this. I, you asked me the question a week ago mm-hmm. about what do you do with the first four guys? If the guy hitting second ain't getting it done, hitting 143 with runners in scoring position with a whopping zero homers, and the guy hitting cleanup is doing better than he is, and you're getting more bats in the two hole, guess who's hitting in the two hole? Do you think we... So it's as simple as do that. Do you think we're on the verge of seeing that happen? I would hope so. You hope so. It's about winning. Okay. Their then, team's not good enough but, to go on these long winning streaks if you don't maximize okay, let's, every dude. Just It's a small sample size. Let's it, assume it ain't weeks at a time. It's like a real small, if three or four days this guy's raking, this guy's hitting second. If that guy hitting second, like it ain't, it ain't feelings anymore. It ain't about getting a guy paid. It's about winning games. And your offense ain't getting it done consistently. So would you... Yeah, we're, 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 John seems we're to think it's early, but it ain't early. It's early. It ain't early. Uh, this has been going on since June what of last year. What would you do year. with Vladdy then? Hit him clean up. I don't know. I ain't moving, Bo. I don't care. Show me you can drive fastballs in the air to the pool side. Until then, if I got a guy that's better than you, I'm going to play him, hit him right there. Khakis will tell you, and I just looked it up. He has more bats than anybody at 21, hitting well, in the two hole I, with runners in scoring position. The next guy is, I think, Kirky with 18. Yeah. I'm hitting. If he continues to hit under 200, your, your lineup's just right now, there's no other way to sugarcoat it. It ain't good. So you have to maximize what is good. And Turner's really good. And Varsha's really They're moving for show because he's good. 940 will be the first pitch tonight. Yariel Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. against Matt Waldron. Jose Barrios against my favorite pitcher to be confirmed on Saturday. Chris Bassett against Joe Musgrove on Sunday afternoon. That is it for us. We will be back Monday from 2 to 4 Eastern on Sportsnet 590 Fan of Sportsnet. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the baseball.